is section 44D2. Uh, we're continuing with applications for optimizing functions. And uh, we're going to focus on uh, economics, uh, an economics example today. So um, just a few definitions. We're going to call R of X the revenue from selling, uh, from selling a product. So the revenue is the money that comes in. And um, the, uh, we're going we're to call this the function C of X the cost of producing an item. So that's the money that's going out, basically. And so if we subtract the two, revenue minus cost, then that's the profit. That's what we get to keep. And, um, and so we kind of adopt this sort of uh, f philosophy or, or perspective when we're talking about um, maximizing profit or minimizing cost and stuff like that. Um, and that is, if we look at these functions closely enough, um, we call them locally linear. In other words, if we zoom in really, really close, every function basically looks like a line. So if it's locally linear, we can use what we call a marginal to approximate the extra revenue cost or profit resulting from selling, selling one more or producing one more item. So in other words, since we can call it locally linear, the marginal ends up being the slope of that line or the derivative. So our marginal revenue um, is the derivative of the revenue function at a particular point. And that is the amount of extra money you would get for selling one more item. So it's a it's a it's a it's a rate, and so we take that rate as a cost, or as a as a dollars per item sort of value. So likewise, the marginal cost is the derivative of the cost at a particular value. So in other words, if we look at that slope, that is our extra money per item that we need to spend to make it. And so if we take the difference of those two and took a, take a look at the product function and differentiate that, that's the marginal profit. In other words, that's the additional money that we would earn, that we would get to keep as a result of the, the combination of selling one more and buying the materials to make one more item. So, um, so we're going to use that idea of a marginal to work on some optimization um, problems dealing with economics. Um, so let's take a look at this. Suppose that we are, are making, um, we're making a product and our revenues follow this, this function 3x squared and our cost follows this function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x where x represents millions of units. So we're, we're making millions of these things and we want to we wanna know if, the, if there's a production level that maximizes the profit and if so, what is it? So if we take a look at this, this is our revenue function, it's 3x squared, and it's color-coded, it's red for revenue. And here is our cost function, it's a cubic, it's x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x. So if you notice, um, these two functions cross in a couple of, a couple of different locations. Um, they cross here, here, and here. So this location at the origin kind of makes sense when x is 0, when we produce no units, we have no money that we get for them, and we have nothing we need to spend money on. Um, and then we've got these other two where, where the functions cross as well. And so those two locations are where um, our revenues and our costs are the same. So if our revenue and our costs are the same, then we're not making any money. That makes sense. So and um, and so that occurs at a little over two million, and a little over six million units, where that happens. Um, so we want to avoid that production level, um, where where we're not making any profit. So if if our if our revenue if the, that's a, that's how much we're bringing in, if we want to maximize the profit, we want to see where our revenue is the greatest and our cost is the least. In other words, where the separation of these things um, is the greatest. And we've got two regions that we can look at that. 
for. We can look at it in this region and we can look at it in this region. This region, we have more cost than revenue, so this represents our losses. This region, we have more revenue than cost, so this, re this region represents our profits. And so we have to find that where that gap is the biggest to see where the profit is the biggest. So let's take a look at um, the derivative of the revenue. If we take, here's my revenue function, we differentiate that. Um, and we're going to take a look at where the derivative equals the derivative of the cost function. So if we take a look at that, what we're saying is, we're going to make we're going to look for this location where these two slopes are the same because if these two slopes are the same in other words they're parallel then that represents the biggest gap and the reason why it represents the biggest gap is because when those two slopes are parallel then these two things are neither getting farther apart or closer together so um, so that represents the biggest gap if they if one was if one was higher than the other then that would represent those those lines um, those lines those these curves excuse me coming back together so um, if we differentiate the revenue we get six x if we differentiate the cost we get three x squared minus six x plus fifteen so we need to know where those two functions are, um, or those two derivatives are equal. So um, I'm going to go ahead and bring the 6x over. I see a trinomial, so I'm going to try to factor that. And then first thing I'm going to do is factor out a 3, and then I'm going to look at this trinomial and realize we can factor that into 5 and 1. And so um, when x is equal to 5 million and x is equal to 1 million, we have slopes that are parallel. So that is, um, if we look at that, when x is equal to 1 million, that's right here. And that's when our costs exceed our revenues. So we're going to rule that one out because that's going to be our maximum loss. We certainly don't want to produce things at that level. And so when x equals 5 million, that's when, the, like I said, that's when these slopes are the same. And um, when these slopes are the same, that represents the biggest gap between these two functions. Um, if, if, if we back off of that, where, um, where the revenue is flatter, then, um, then that gap starts to close up. Um, because if this is flatter, then it's then it's moving towards this value, which means that that gap that, that gap gets to be smaller. So um, and and likewise down here, but this is this represents our losses anyway. So we're going to ignore that. So at five million units is when this gap is the largest, and so that's going to represent the biggest revenue um, and a, a production cost that's going to be our um, it's going to be behind the revenue um, by the maximum amount, and so um, and so that's going to be at five million units where we're going to be able to um, uh, maximize our profit. Um, so uh, let's let's kind of after we've tried to maximize profit here. Um, the other thing we can do is minimize the cost. So um, and that's this next example here. Is there a production level at which the average cost is the smallest? Um, and, uh, and that level is where the average cost equals the marginal cost. So if we look at um, our average cost, remember average means algebra. <laughs> So, um, and the marginal cost is the derivative. So we'll, we'll look at our algebra and our derivative. So our average cost is basically saying, what is our cost divided by our, um, our production level? So our, our the number of units produced. So um, this, is, this is kind of a, a slope that, go, that starts from the origin, if you can picture that where we have c of x minus 0 and x minus 0, so it's rise over run from the origin. And so that average cost then looks like this, and we can factor out an x. 
So here's our average cost function. And we're going to set that equal to the marginal cost. And if you remember, the marginal cost is 3x squared minus 6x plus 15. Excuse me, minus 12x plus 15. Um, so that, that marginal cost is the derivative. And when we set those two equal to each other, so when we, when we set the algebra slope equal to the derivative, um, we're talking, you know, we're literally talking about the mean value theorem. Um, then we get this expression. And when we solve this, bring the x squared over, get 2x squared, bring this minus 6x over, get minus 6x. The 15s cancel out. And when we solve that, we get an x, an x value of 0 units and 3 million units. So um, obviously, uh, we're going to meet our average if we don't do anything. But also at 3 million units, um, that production level is going to minimize the average cost. So 3 million units is right here. And, um, and so when we're looking at that location, there's our average cost. Remember, it's an algebra slope between the origin and that location. And that equals the slope here. So um, what we're saying is then um, anywhere else, these two things wouldn't be the same slope. So at any other point along the, uh, along the, cost, uh, the cost function, those two would be different slopes. It's where these slopes are the same that we minimize our, um, our average cost. Otherwise, if we would go anywhere else along this cost, fun if we would try to draw an average cost anywhere else along the blue function, that line would be more vertical. So that line, would, if that line's more vertical, that means the average cost is, is bigger. So um, we want to get that flattest average cost, and connecting those two points is what does that. Um, so at this point, you can look at the day two homework, which would, should have some uh, economic um, problems to work on, as well as some other problems that are more geometric in nature.